So you want to make your videos look professional by using animations like these. Or perhaps you want to make some stunning lower thirds like that one. These are super underrated among smaller creators, so you need to start using them. They will boost engagement and increase traffic to your social media. So today, my friend, you will learn three beautiful animations in Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's start with something easy. You know, we need to warm up first. Yeah, Number one, social media icons. First, drag your icons in the timeline and put them on top of each other. We're gonna match the scale of the icons. To do that, hide the top three layers. Then select the bottom logo and go to the effect controls. Adjust the scale so that the logo is visible in your frame. Also make sure the icon is positioned in the middle. To do that, hold down control and drag it to the center. It's that simple. Now back in the timeline, make the layer on top visible again. Select it and move back to the effect controls. Now adjust the scale until the icon is approximately the same size as the Instagram logo. Just do this for all your logos. Next, drag the clips next to each other and right click the first one. Choose nest. We're doing this because otherwise the next effect will cause issues. Now, quick tip, I actually have a nest shortcut on the F5 key. That way I just have to select it and hit F5 on my keyboard. Now, do the same for the other clips and now we're gonna start animating. Go to the effects library and find the transform effect. Drag it on the first nest and head over to the effect controls. Move the player to the beginning of your clip and set the scale to zero. Then set a scale keyframe. Grab the playhead and move a little further in time. Now set the scale a little over 100. Right click the second keyframe and choose ease in. That will make the animation smooth. You can make it even smoother by expanding the scale curves and then playing with the levers. The animation will then follow the curve. Next we're gonna make the animation bounce a little. To do that move a few frames further in time again and set the scale back to 100. Of course also ease the keyframe. Next we're gonna make this animation disappear by reversing the keyframes. Simply copy and paste the keyframes back and forth but in reverse. Select the first two keyframes and right click them. Choose ease out. The last one can stay linear. Now go all the way to the bottom and increase the shutter angle to 180 degrees to introduce motion blur. That looks nice, but we're not done yet. Right click the transform effect and choose copy. Then go to the timeline and select the other icons. Press Ctrl V on your keyboard. Now the animation is applied to all the icons. Next, drag the logos on top of each other like a stair. Make sure that when the first logo disappears, the second one comes in. And lastly, select all the icons and nest them. Now in the effect controls, you can use the motion properties to scale and place the animation wherever you want. Amazing, but you can actually get animations like this so much faster by simply downloading templates. Just click the download button and once it's installed, it will appear automatically in the essential graphics panel. All you need to do is change the text and customize it to your liking. By the way, I downloaded this using the Storyblocks plugin, so I don't even have to leave Premiere anymore. Oh, and Storyblocks is also sponsoring this video. Thank you. Now you can download more than just templates. You'll find a million high quality royalty free stock assets from all over the world. Space, planets, sports and so much more. And all of that in HD and 4K resolution. Now we also have our very own landing page full of videos that we shot specifically for you guys. Most of them are shot in a lock profile, that way you have all the control when color grading the footage. Now on other stock websites you need to pay an expensive price per clip, but on Storyblocks you will get one set price. You can choose to pay monthly or annually. And don't worry about licensing or copyright strikes. They will take care of that. I've been using Starblocks for as long as I'm an editor and I I really recommend it to any creative. So take back creative control with Starblocks unlimited royalty free stock library and tools today by clicking the link in the description down below or going to starblocks.com forward slash Premiere Basics. Now let's get back to Premiere. I think you're ready for the second animation of today, which is going to be an advanced timer. First, click the new item button in the project window, then click on transparent video, drag it on top of your video in the timeline and this is going to be the timer. Next, go to the effect library and find the time code effect, drag it on the transparent video. As you can see, a timer will appear right there. Now it's time to customize it. Go to the effect controls and on the time code effect, disable the field symbol. This will remove the point next to our timer. Now set the opacity of the background to zero. Next find the crop effect and drag it on your clip. Then select it, which will make these lines appear. Drag them until you create a box around the second. We don't need the hours, minutes and frames. Once that's done, reposition it in the middle of the frame. Now I want my timer to count downwards, but there's no such setting. We also can't reverse the clip, but there's a workaround. To do that, nest the transparent video. Now right click it and choose speed duration. In this window, you can simply enable the reverse option. There you go. Now what if you want to change the color of the timer? Find the tint effect and drag it on your clip. In the effect controls, click the map black 2 property. Set the color to white because our timer is white. Then click OK. Now open up the map white 2 property and here you can choose a color you want the timer to be. It's that simple. Next we're gonna create this in sync animation around the timer. To do that, click and hold the shape icon. Then choose the ellipse tool. 
tool. In the program monitor, hold down shift and drag a circle like this. By the way, by holding shift, the circle will be perfect. Then center it by holding control and drag it to the middle. Now this graphic layer appeared in the timeline. We want it to be underneath the timer, so drag it in between the two tracks. Next, we're gonna customize the shape. To do that, go to the window menu on top and open up essential graphics. Now select the shape we just created and at the bottom, disable the fill color. Next, enable the stroke and increase the thickness to around 90. We're gonna animate the stroke in sync with the timer. But first, we're gonna add a nice background to the timer. To do that, duplicate the shape in the essential graphics by copying and pasting it. Select the bottom one and on the bottom, disable the stroke. Then enable the fill color and open up the color wheel. Now set it to white and click on OK. Then decrease the opacity to around 11% and that looks amazing. All right, it's time to animate the shape. To do that, find the radial wipe effect and drag it on top of the first shape in essential graphics. This effect will work on anything that sits underneath it, but we only want it to work on the first shape. To do that, select both the effects and the shape layer. Then click on the folder icon. Now the effect will only work on everything that's below it and inside the same folder. Now select the radial wipe effect. If you now go to the effect controls, the effect will be highlighted as well. Move the play it to the beginning of your animation and set the transition completion to 100. Then set a keyframe. Grab the play it and move further in time. Then set the completion to 0%. If you want to change the direction of the animation, you can do that right here. Now that looks amazing, but to finish off the effect, nest everything together. Now you can use the motion properties again to scale and position it however you like. Very nice, but now it's time for the third animation, a super clean, modern lower third. In the toolbar, grab the pen tool and go to the program monitor. Then draw a straight line by holding down shift and clicking. Now go down and while holding shift, click again. Now we have this lower third shape. In essential graphics, make sure the fill is disabled and the stroke is enabled. Now don't forget to set the stroke to center as well. This is gonna be the shape of our lower third. To animate it, find the crop effect in the effects library. Drag it on top of the shape, select the crop effect and go to the effect controls. Now move the play to the beginning and set a right keyframe. Then select the crop effect and in the program monitor drag the lines all the way to the left so that the shape isn't visible. In the effect controls move further in time and then select crop again and drag the right line until it's visible again. Now adjust the bottom line so that only the first line is visible. Then of course set a bottom keyframe. Move further in time again and select the crop effect. Then in the program monitor drag the bottom line downwards. And now we have this simple animated line. Next we're gonna add a white background to the lower third. First we're gonna put everything in a full Folder, just like you learned before. This way future effects won't interfere with this animation. Now click the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle to fill up the lower third. Of course, make sure the fill is set to white and the stroke is disabled. We're gonna make it slide into place like this. To do that, select the shape layer and go to the effect controls. Now simply animate the position property so that the shape slides in. Don't forget to ease in the last keyframe by the way. Next, we're gonna remove the shape underneath the lower third. To do that, find the crop effect and drag it on top of the shape. Of course, make sure to select both of them and put them in a folder. With crop effect selected, go to the effect controls. Then select the effect and drag the bottom line under the lower third. Now to make this animation even nicer, we're gonna add some waves to it. Find the wave warp effect and put it in between the shape and the crop effect. Because we still want the crop effect to work on the wave effect. Now go to the effect controls and adjust the wave width to something around 200. Set the height to 30 and that looks awesome. Now after this animation, I also added a yellow shape that slides in like this. All I did was animate the position property for that. Now it's time to add some text. Grab the text tool and type in your name for example. In the essential graphics, select it and here you can customize it completely to your liking. You can always use the save margins in the program monitor to make sure your text stays inside. Once you're done, we're gonna animate the text into the lower third. Select it and go to the effect controls. Set a position keyframe and move back in time. Now lower the text until it's underneath the white space. Of course, don't forget to ease in the last keyframes. You know, smoothness. And now we're gonna hide it underneath the lower third. Now find the crop effect and drag it on top of your layer. Again, make sure to put both of the effects inside a folder. Now select it and in the effect controls, select the crop effect. In the program monitor, drag the bottom line up to the white box. For the text in the yellow shape, you can follow the exact same steps. Now it's time to make everything disappear. To do that, find the transform effect and drag it on top of all your folders. We want the effect to be applied to everything inside the graphic layer. With the transform effect selected, go to the effect controls. Now create a simple position animation just like you learned before. Of course, don't forget to ease out the first keyframe and increase the shutter angle to add some motion blur. Definitely play around with shapes and stuff as much as you want. This is what I came up with. That lower third looks amazing. And now that that's out of the way, you're gonna learn how to make a sick title animation for your videos. So to continue the lesson, click the video on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, stay creative.